What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the M2 Max Max Studio. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers, so if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified when a new video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, before we continue with this video, I do want to mention the spec for this Mac Studio. So it has the M2 Max chip, which has a 12 core CPU, a 30 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory, along with 512 gigabytes of SSD based storage. So the first benchmarking application which I ran on this Mac Studio was Geekbench 4. So Geekbench is quite a good benchmarking program as it runs a number of different tests and algorithms on a single core along with all the cores combined. So when running this test, I got a CPU single core score of 7,167 with a multi-core score of 44,804. I also performed Geekbench 4's compute graphics test running their OpenCR and Metal test to test the 30 core GPU found in this M2 Max. And when running the OpenCR test, I got scores of 269,752. And when running the Metal test, I got scores of 220,952. The next testing application which I ran on this Mac Studio was once again from Geekbench, however, from their slightly newer version, Geekbench 5. And when running this test, I got CPU single core scores of 1,509, and I got a multi core score of 11,842. Again, I ran the OpenCL and Metal Compute test to see how well this 30 core GPU would perform in this M2 Max. So when running the OpenCL test, I got a score of 63,298. And when running the Metal Compute test, I got scores of 73,544. The next test I ran was once again from Geekbench. However, this is from their latest and most up-to-date set of tests found in Geekbench 6. So once again, starting off with the CPU test, I got single core scores of 2,693 with a multi-core score of 14,912. And when running the OpenCL compute test through Geekbench 6, I got scores of 76,453. And when running the metal compute test, I got scores of 127,636. I then wanted to further test the CPU's performance, so I ran a number of different tests from Cinebench. Now starting off with Cinebench R20, I got a CPU score of 4089. I then ran Cinebench R23. So Cinebench R23 is quite good as it gives a score for the single core performance along with the multi-core performance and then calculates the ratio between the two. The higher the ratio, the better the performing CPU. So when running Cinebench R23, I got a single core score of 1659 with a multi-core score of 14808, which indeed gives us a ratio of 8.92. The next test I ran was once again from Cinebench, however from their latest and most up-to-date set of tests. And like with Cinebench R23, it will give a single and multi-core score and works out the ratio between the two. So when running this test, I got a single core score of 124, along with a multi-core score of 1042, which gives us a ratio of 8.41. I wanted to further test that 30 core GPU in this Mac Studio, so I ran the graphics test found in Cinebench 2024. Now when running this test, I got a score of 5142. And so sticking to the trend of testing the graphics in this Mac Studio, I then ran a number of different tests from 3 d Mark. Now starting off with the wildlife test, it got a maxed out score, we were also averaging 60 frames per second, which I've got a feeling it's averaging 60 frames per second, as that is the highest that the studio Studio display that this Mac Studio was plugged into can display. So I then ran the wildlife stress test and this test was also quite useless but quite good. It showed that this Mac Studio's highest score was 10,020 and its lowest score was also 10,020. So that just means after 20 consecutive loops of the wildlife test that this Mac Studio was quite cool. 
So I therefore ran the wildlife extreme test and when running this test it also got a score of 10,020 with it once again averaging 60 frames per second and so I thought you know what let's run the wildlife extreme stress test and once again I got the same scores with it getting a higher score of 10,020 with a lower score of 10,020. So once again the M2 Max chip in this Max Studio it's being cooled very well. So with the newer M3 family of chips, there is hardware ray tracing. So I wanted to see how the M2 Max would handle these types of tasks. So I ran the Solar Bay test, and when running this test, I got a score of 15,780, with an average frame rate once again of 60 frames per second. And when running the Solar Bay stress test, I got a higher score of 15,780, with a lower score of 15,774. So it slightly started to dip, but considering that we've ran all of these tests previously i think you'd agree with me that it's handling this quite well i then ran gfx bench metal now gfx bench runs a number of different tests which are ran both on and off screen at higher and lower levels of intensity now i have calculated the average for the higher and lower categories but as always i will show you each individual result so for the higher intensive tasks i got an average of 599.06 frames per second and i got an average of 421.87 frames per second for the lower intensive tasks i then ran nova bench 2 now nova bench is a good general benchmark as it tests all aspects of the machine from the cpu and gpu but also the system memory and the system storage so when running this test i got a score of 2991 i also wanted to test the 512 gigabyte ssd's performance in this mac studio so when running the black magic disk speed test i got write speeds of 3492.9 megabytes per second with read speeds of 2,993.9 megabytes per second. I also wanted to see how these speeds would compare when running the Aja disk speed test. So when running that test, I got write speeds of 4,747 megabytes per second and read speeds of 3,362 megabytes per second. I also ran a Wi-Fi network speed test. I got download speeds of 482 megabits per second with upload speeds of 95.1 megabits per second. I also ran the V-Ray test and got scores of 9,711. Using Blender, I then timed the render times of multiple different scenes. So when rendering the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 7 minutes and 12 seconds to render, whereas with the GPU, it took 1 minute and 19 seconds to render. And when rendering the BMW scene using the CPU, it took 2 minutes and 26 seconds to render. And when using the GPU, it was much faster with it coming in at 39 seconds. I then ran the slightly newer version of Blender, Blender 4.0 and when rendering the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 5 minutes and 37 seconds to render. And when rendering the BMW scene using the CPU through Blender 4.0, it completed it in 2 minutes and 27 seconds. And when it comes to using the GPU, it completed it in 34 seconds. I then ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider graphics benchmark and when running this test at the studio display's native resolution of 5120 by 2880 with the graphic setting set to the highest, it managed to render 3352 frames with it averaging 21 frames per second. And when the resolution was lowered to 3840 by 2160, it managed to render 5660 frames averaging 35 frames per second. And when the resolution was lowered to 1920 by 1080, once again keeping the graphic settings at its highest, it now managed to render 16,380 frames, averaging 104 frames per second. I once again lowered the resolution, but this time to standard HD, that's 1280 by 720. And when running at this resolution, it managed to render 20,238 frames, with it averaging 120 frames per second. 
I then exported a 5 minute 23 second video file through Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off. And when exporting to H.264 and 1920 by 1080, it managed to complete this in 27 seconds. And when exporting as a 4K project, that's 3840 by 2160, it this time managed to export in 1 minute and 25 seconds. And the final set of tests which I ran on this Mac Studio came from Unigen benchmarking tools. And starting off with the Heaven benchmark, which was ran at 2560 by 1440, I got a score of 3,578 with an average frame rate of 142.1 frames per second. And lowering the resolution to 1440 by 900, I got a score of 4,547 with an average frame rate of 180.5 frames per second. I also ran the Valley test from Unigen Benchmarking Tools and when running this test at 2560 by 1440, I got a score of 5,412 with an average frame rate of 129.4 frames per second. And when the resolution was lowered to 1440 by 900, I got a score of 5,672 with an average frame rate of 135.6 frames per second. And so that will be it for today's video. Of course, I will be uploading a number of videos over the coming weeks showcasing what it's like to play a handful of games on this Mac Studio. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you've got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in this video's comment section. Or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, the links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.